After their earnings announcement last week, Adobe stock dropped by around 13%. This dip is mostly due to the disappointing outlook for 2024, but for me as a long-term investor, the main question is how the current AI evolution will impact Adobe. Can they manage to include the advanced AI functionality into their products in a way that their customers can benefit from it and optimize their workflow? Or will their tools lose relevance in a world of quickly improving AI image and also video generators? In this video, I will dig into the business models and the markets of Adobe, analyze the strategic position by doing a Porter's Five Forces analysis and have a look at the latest financial statements to see how they are doing. I'll also check the valuation and do a discounted cash flow calculation to determine their fair value. In the end, I will tell you my plan on how I will proceed with Adobe and if I think that they are a good long-term investment or not. My name is Florian, welcome to Cashflow Maniac. Adobe has the ticker symbol of ADBE on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange and they are working in the information technology sector. They were founded in 1982 and have around 30,000 employees right now and their headquarters is in San Jose, California. Their market cap is at 222 billion US dollars right now. At first, let's compare the total performance of Adobe against the total performance of the S&P 500. And here we can see that over the last year, Adobe was ahead of the S&P 500 over most of the time, but over the last couple of months, they dropped down again. And in the end, the performance of both of them has been quite similar. Over the last five years, it actually looks quite similar. Here we can also see that in the end, of this five year period, the performance was very similar, almost no difference between the two of them. But we can also see that Adobe's volatility was quite a bit higher compared to the S&P 500. Over the last 10 years, it looks a bit different. Here we can see that Adobe almost exactly tripled the performance of the S&P 500. We have almost 700% re total return of Adobe against 230% total return in the S&P 500. So over the last 10 years, Adobe did perform quite well. Adobe's business can be split into three main segments. First of all, we have the Adobe Creative Cloud, the Adobe Document Cloud, and the Adobe Experience Cloud. The Creative Cloud provides apps and web services for all kinds of creative products like photography, graphic design, video editing, drawing and painting, and so on. You can see many famous products here. For example, we have Photoshop, Premiere Pro, but also the Acrobat Reader and free apps like Photoshop Express or the Firefly Image AI. The Adobe Document Cloud includes many different apps and tools to professionally work with the PDF file format. For example, you can connect your PDFs from anywhere and share them with anyone. You can review a report on your phone, edit the proposals on the tablet or add some comments in your browser. So it really has tools for all kinds of different infrastructures and also built-in integrations. So you can really work safely on your PDFs no matter where you are or on what device you're on. This also includes already a couple of generative AI assistants that help you work with these PDFs. Last but not least, we have the Adobe Experience Cloud and their publishing and advertising services. These are basically their professional solutions for the whole marketing workflow. So for example, you have kind of analytics tools in here, you have management and experience management tools here, and with their publishing and advertisement services, it really makes it very easy to also publish your marketing content. Unfortunately, it gets a little bit confusing when you look at their numbers and their reports, because here they report three different segments, which is the digital media segment, the digital experience segment, and the publishing and advertisement segment. And in their digital media segment, they basically combine their creative cloud and the Adobe document cloud. The digital experience are their professional tools, the Adobe digital experience cloud, and the publishing and advertisement sector is exactly that. The digital media segment in this case makes up around three quarter of their revenue, while the digital experience segment makes up one quarter and their publishing and advertisement sectors only 2% of their revenue. So this is only a very minor part of the business. When we scroll down here and look at their split by geography, we can see that the Americas makes up the majority of the turnover with 60%, followed by Europe with 25% and Asia only 15% of their revenue. 
When I read through the presentation of the last investors meeting, it really stood out to me how often they mention AI. AI is basically on every second page of this report. AI. 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 And this brings me to the elephant in the room. And yes, of course I did generate this elephant with Adobe's Firefly tool. So Adobe is really working very hard on implementing AI tools in most of their, if not all of their products. And what really stands out to me here is that they, first of all, build their own AI models, not only one model, but different models um, targeted to different kinds of workflows, different kind of tools, and basically different kind of applications. And second of all, they don't only provide these AIs with their tools, but they also provide the APIs and provide these AIs as service offerings to third-party companies. It is also possible to customize these AI models. And of course, with the whole ecosystem of products for the creative and document workflow, they have a lot of data to use to train their, their models. Here we can see a couple of examples where they integrate the AI for the content creation and production. These are the tools that most of us have probably already tried out, like the Adobe Firefly or also the generative fill in Adobe Photoshop. But they also have AIs that help you getting a smooth workflow and help also collaborate with different creators or also different tools. They have AI tools that help you with professional marketing campaigns to help you publish on time and prepare your marketing material with always the same brand language. And of course, in the end, they also have a lot of analytics and reporting tools that you can also use for your marketing campaigns or your marketing actions to see how effective they are and to make your analysis and your reporting in the end much easier. What I do like a lot and where I see a big advantage of Adobe's AIs compared to, to other AIs is that they really try to build this to be commercially safe. So they only use licensed content as training material and they are also doing some content moderation in order to avoid that the AI gets pushed in a certain direction or maybe provides wrong information. So they are targeting professional users here that really rely on these AI tools to be safe, to be used for commercial use. For most of the other AI tools, this is still a huge problem at the moment. The global digital content creation market can be split into tools and services. Adobe is basically working in both of these sides. The whole market is expected to grow by around 13% until 2033. So Adobe is definitely working in a market with a securely trend here. When we look at the strategic position of Adobe by doing the Portis 5 Forces analysis, first of all, I would expect the threat of new entrants to be low. The development for these software suits, especially in graphics design and video editing space, is very complex and not easy. So the entry barriers are quite high. Adobe also has an extensive portfolio, subscription-based models, and a huge brand recognition that makes it very tough for other companies to enter this segment. The threat of substitutes, on the other hand, I would estimate as low to medium. With their creative cloud, they offer a whole ecosystem with mostly industry standard software. So even though there are alternatives for each individual tool available, the integration and compatibility between these tools makes it very hard to replace it as a whole. Many professionals also have implemented these tools from Adobe into their workflow and the learning curve for these tools is also quite significant. So there is definitely a huge effort necessary to replace them. I would rate the competitive rivalry as high. The software industry is marked by fierce competition and Adobe does face significant rivalry from a multitude of competitors. So to maintain its leadership position, Adobe must continue to innovate, offer value-added services and provide exceptional customer support. It is also very hard to stay relevant and up-to-date in this highly competitive industry. That forces Adobe to put a significant effort not only in R&D, but also in merchant acquisition. The bargaining power of the customers I would rate as medium to high. Even though Adobe's products are the de facto standard in most of the areas they are operating, there are other and mostly cheaper alternatives on the market, sometimes even free programs like Canva 
or the DaVinci editing software for videos. Even though their subscription-based model and the switching costs do give them some negotiation power over their customers. If the price is too high, these customers will definitely switch to cheaper or even free alternatives. The bargaining power of their supplies, on the other hand, I would estimate as quite low. Most of the development is done in-house, which already limits the amount and also the power of some hard and software suppliers. And for external suppliers that Adobe uses, they do have a diverse supplier base with long supplier relationships, which also gives them some bargaining power. So overall, I would say that Adobe is working in a highly competitive industry and they have to strive to stay on top. But at the moment, their tools are the de facto standard for most of these industries. So it is tough to get around the Adobe products. They do have quite a good strategic position in the market. Before we jump to the financial analysis in just a second, if you do like the video so far, please smash the like and the subscribe button in order not to miss my next video. The financials of the company do look very nice on the first glance. Here we see for the total, the, the total revenue has been rising over the last almost 10 years, very steadily, almost linearly. And for the net income, it's almost the same. We have a huge outlier here in 2020. And that is also reflected actually when we look at the net margins on the left hand side here. Net margin in the purple bar and the return of invested capital here in the cyan bar. But in general, the trend is also pointing very much upwards, although over the last couple of years, it has been stagnating a little bit. Only in the free cash flow and the cash flow operating activities, we have a slight dip here in the last fiscal year of Adobe, unfortunately. But if you look at the trailing 12 months as of today, we can again see a very small uptrend. When we go to the balance sheet, we can also see the same trend for the EBITDA. Here we have a steady uptrend, it's increasing year by year. Only over the last three years, the growth has slowed down a little bit. But you can also see in 2023, it has picked up speed again. Adobe is sitting on a huge amount of cash and cash equivalents right now, around 7 billion US dollars. And when we compare this to the long-term liabilities that they have, it's only at 3.7 billion US dollars. So that means Adobe's balance sheet is very clean and they do have more cash on hand than they do have liabilities at the moment. Even if you look at the total liabilities, which also includes the short term debt, they can cover more than half of this already with only their cash and cash equivalents. Adobe has also bought back shares constantly over the last couple of years. So here you can see that the shares outstanding are going down on a year to year basis. And indeed, they have announced again a new share buyback program for the next three years. So this trend will definitely continue like this. Adobe is not paying any dividends, so they don't spend any money on dividends. When we jump to the forecast tab, we can see that most analysts are quite bullish in terms of Adobe. So the average rating of the analysts at the moment sits at more than plus 20% and the maximum even close to 40%. The EPS and also the revenue down here is expected to grow over the next couple of years. So here we can see a very nice forecast trend. In terms of the analyst's forecast, I would be a little bit careful, to be honest, because the history shows that after a, a huge price dip, many analysts will adjust their rating. And we just recently had this huge dip. So I would expect that a couple of these analysts will adjust the forecast for the next years and I would actually expect these numbers to come down a little bit. This is also due to the weaker forecast that Adobe reported in their last quarterly report. So please take these numbers with a grain of salt right now. One thing that I also found when digging a bit deeper into the numbers of Adobe is that the stock based compensation makes up a huge portion of their free cash flow. Here we can see right now it makes up 1.7 billion US dollars while their total free cash flow only sits at 6.7 billion US dollars. So the stock based compensation sits at about 25% of the total free cash flow of Adobe. And if we look at the trend down here, purple line is the stock based compensation against the blue line free cash flow. It is rising on a very similar level. And recently, the stock based compensation has even risen quicker than the free cash flow. 
So this is definitely not a trend I would like to see and 25% is a huge amount of their free cash flow that they have to pay on a regular basis. So I don't like this trend a bit to be honest. So when we sum this up by using my checklist, first of all we can see that the revenue growth over the last five years has been sitting around 16% which beats my target of 6% easily. Green checkbox for me. The net income sits at 12.3% on a 5 year CAGR, which also easily beats my target of 10%. Although for the net income and also the free cash flow, the trend is actually going down quite a bit and over the recent years, as we also just saw in the graph, both of these numbers have stagnated a bit or even dipped down a little bit. So as I just mentioned, the free cash flow growth over the last five years has been very strong, almost 20%. But recently it has dipped down a little bit and on a trailing 12 months basis it is only sitting at 3.1% right now. So we definitely have to observe this trend, how it will continue over the next couple of years. But I would not expect this insane growth they had over the last 5 or almost 10 years even to continue like this in the future. In their balance sheet we just saw that Adobe actually has more cash on hand than they do have long term debt. So their debt to EBITDA ratio is basically zero. Very clean balance sheet, very nice to see. Definitely a green checkbox for me. Adobe is not paying any dividends, so we can skip this category for today. And the margin and the returns of invested capital also has a very nice growth trend over the last couple of years. Although we also saw a spike in 2020 here and in the last couple of years it has also stagnated a little bit. Overall, the financials and the growth rates of Adobe over the last 5 to 10 years are looking very nice. But we can already see that all these trends are coming down a little bit and the trend in the last couple of years has slowed down quite significantly. So we definitely need to see how this will progress in the future and I would not expect that they can continue this huge growth rate that they had also over the next couple of years. I definitely think that their business will slow down a little bit. Also, with the stock-based compensation sitting at 25% of their free cash flow, this is quite an insane number and something I definitely don't want to see with a company I invest in. Before we come to the conclusion in just a bit, let's also have a look at the valuation. The first thing we see is that all of these valuation metrics are quite high. Also, if we look at the trend over the last five years, Adobe has never been cheap basically. Here, in 2023 we can see that we had a slight dip in all of these valuations and right now very recently it is also coming down a little bit again. But over most of this time Adobe has been sitting at quite a premium valuation in all of these metrics. With these high valuations we should be asking ourselves is Adobe really worth this? And for this we need to determine their fair value and their intrinsic value. So let's have a look at the fair value models. And I plugged in the growth numbers that are expected over the next couple of years, the analyst expectations basically here. I didn't use the numbers of the last five years or the last 10 years here because my expectation and the expectation of these analysts also is that the growth rates will definitely come down in the next couple of years. So for the free cash flow growth rate I assumed 9% here and for the net income growth rate I assumed 8% here. What I did not adjust is the price to free cash flow multiple and also the PE multiple. I did use the 5 year average values here. And with these assumptions we come to a fair value of around 517, 580 US dollars which sits very close to the current stock price of 519 US dollars. By including my margin of safety of 20% we come to a fair value of 414 US dollars. If you assume that the valuation and these high multiples will stay at the same level as we have it today. So in this case it actually looks like Adobe is around fairly valued at the moment. If we assume on the other hand that these multiples will come down more to a market medium around 20 and 25 the fair value of Adobe would be sitting quite a bit lower. In this case and with including my margin of safety of again 20% we would be sitting at a fair value of around 315 US dollars. So with these assumptions Adobe would be valued quite highly actually. 
even though the management of Adobe only released a modest forecast of the top line growth in the last quarterly report, the financials of the company still look quite remarkable. The long term growth rates of the last 5 and even 10 years are very strong, but since 2022 the growth has slowed down quite a bit. The balance sheet is very clean with more cash than debt, which is very nice to see and they also just announced a new share buyback program. The only and admittedly quite big hair in the soup is the hefty and ever increasing share of stock based compensation that makes up more than 25% of the current free cash flow. The creative design software market is going through a huge transformation due to the dawn of generative AI and Adobe is working very hard on implementing many AI tools into all of their products and even develop their own models with a focus on the quality and copyright security that is necessary for professional users. I believe that Adobe will rather benefit from the integration of such tools as they provide a complete catalog of products with AI integration rather than just one part of the creative proce process like DALI, Midjourney or Sora AI do. I also believe that these AI tools will not replace professionals but rather help them in their workflow. As a market leader and de facto standard, Adobe might be able to benefit from this most. But for me, there is quite a high uncertainty here and these other AI tools also do have the possibility to disrupt the business model of Adobe in the future. So honestly speaking, at the moment I would not bet my money on this. The valuation of Adobe, even though it's quite high, is still on par with the historical values over the last 5 years. So if you believe that Adobe can be a winner in the AI race and can manage to increase their growth rates again, they might be a nice addition to your portfolio in the current dip. For me, the situation is just too uncertain and I really do not like the huge amount of stock-based compensation that Adobe has. Also, they just doesn't fit too good into my portfolio at the moment, so I am not invested and I also don't have a plan to invest in Adobe at the moment. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you did find the analysis helpful, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel in order not to miss my next video. And if you're looking for another company that might also be a good fit to your long term portfolio, check out this video.